Back at the roundtable for Big East basketball previews and five things to watch for the 2018-19 Seton Hall University Pirates. With the graduation of last year's senior class, it seems like this season is the start of a new era for Seton Hall basketball. However, I would argue the opposite. This program has moved on from the toxicity of the previous regime and has established a high culture program with high character players. And even with some drama persisting under Coach Willard, a new culture has been established with this team over the last few years. The impact of last year's seniors will be felt for years to come both on the floor and off it. This is a program that has now been to three straight NCAA tournaments and picked up their first tournament victory since 2004 last season. So while there would be a fair number of new faces, this is still the beginning of a new era of Seton Hall basketball. Miles Powell and Miles Kell will both be crucial pieces to this team's success next season. Kell is returning for a sophomore season with some starting experience after last season's injury to Desi Rodriguez. He really started to bring his game together towards the end of the season and establish himself as a reliable piece for this team. Powell returns as the conference's most improved player last season and this team's third highest scorer who averaged 15.5 points per game a season ago. Powell will once again be relied on heavily to score, and now this season create offense for his teammates. Much of this team's potential success next season hinges on Powell's ability to be the guy from day one, and if Cal can continue the progress he showed late last season, this duo should be one of the Big East's best on the wing. Freshman Jared Roden should also help on the wing next season, and help make up for a lot of lost scoring. He's a pure scorer with a very smooth jump shot. Kaneen Carrington was not really thought of as a true point guard when he first stepped on campus as a freshman four seasons ago, but by last season he truly excelled as his team's primary ball handler and playmaker. Of course Carrington graduated and it will be up to Anthony Nelson and Quincy McKnight to fill the point guard void. The freshman Nelson, like Carrington, is a left-handed shoot-first point guard who is at his best when taking the opponents off the dribble, getting to the rim, and using his athleticism to finish. He uses that athleticism well defensively and he should be fairly reliable on that side of the ball as well. McKnight is a transfer from Sacred Heart who joins the Seen Hall team with two years of eligibility remaining. His experience should be valuable for this fairly young team. And like Nelson, McKnight is a scorer first and most of the scoring is done around the rim. This team may be a bit short on experience but is certainly not short on size. They have five guys who are 6'9 or taller who could all potentially be contributors this season. Starting with the only senior in this class, Michael Enzi. Enzi made a jump last year in terms of offensive production. In his first three seasons, he was a guy you did not have to pay too much attention to on offense, but he changed that last year and showed signs of a mid-range game and was extremely efficient around the rim and was a very reliable finisher even in traffic. Of course, he will still not score a ton, but his solid offensive game was nice to add in addition to his relentless offensive rebounding and versatile offensive ability. Sandro Mamu Kalashvili is the other returning big for this squad. Mamu will return his versatile offensive game, which includes the ability to shoot and also take guys off the dribble and finish inside. He played some good minutes behind Delgado last year and seems primed for a starting role this season. Torian Thompson is a transfer from Syracuse who could have a big impact on this team. Thompson was a fairly highly touted recruit a few seasons ago out of Brewster Academy and joins SHU with three years of eligibility remaining. He has a pretty high ceiling in terms of potential, but he also brings a lot to the table right now as a long athletic big who can play both inside and out. He could be a starter for the Seton Hall team right out of the gate and could be a star player down the road. Romaro Gill is a 7'2 junior college transfer. He profiles as a shot blocker, averaging 2.5 a, a game the last season he played in junior college. The question is how much will he actually play and how good is the rest of his game outside of shot blocking. It's worth noting he was Seton Hall's third highest scorer in their scrimmage with Boss College last week. He scored 10 points on 6 shots. Darnell Brody is the last guy here. He's a freshman from Northeast Side. He was going to enroll last year but instead took a grad year at Montverde in Florida. He should offer some toughness and strength inside off the bench next season. This team's lack of experience will be made up in a hurry with their tough non-conference schedule. They play at Nebraska in what should be a tough road game against a very good Nebraska team. They go to California to play in the Wooden Legacy Tournament. If they avoid upsets in the first two rounds, they could get a tournament final game against Miami or Northwestern, two very good teams. They then play a familiar foe in Louisville and another familiar foe in former Xavier head coach Chris Mack. That's the home leg of that series. They then get a neutral site game at the Garden versus one of the country's best in Kentucky. That should be a fun one. Of course, always nice to get some Madison Square Garden experience before the Big East tournament. Their last big non-conference game is going to College Park to play Maryland, who should be a pretty good team this year. So the potential for some good neutral site and road games is there, but of course losing those games is nothing for you. 
This is a schedule that could pay off very nicely for a team that profiles as a bubble team at this point. There seems to be a second tier in the Big East forming just below Villanova this year, and the Hall seems to be just outside of that second tier at the moment, so I do have them finishing 7th in the conference at this point. However, this is the year of balance in the Big East, and it would not surprise me if one or two games is all that separated the 2nd place finisher from the ninth place finisher, and it would not be too surprising if Seton Hall finished anywhere in that range. This could be a bridge year for the Pirates with a lot of younger players and just one senior in NZ, but 20 wins and a tournament trip is certainly not outside of the realm of possibility. That's going to be it from the roundtable. Check out my Villanova preview in the bottom right. I may do a couple more Big East team previews if we have the time. Of course, the season's just a few days away, so we'll see. However, you can still subscribe for more Big East basketball videos and power rankings throughout the season. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.